everyone, and welcome to the other Prince William podcast, a project of the Prince William Chamber of Commerce. I'm Bob Sweeney, President and CEO of the Prince William Chamber of Commerce, and I want to tell you why we started this podcast. It's because across the pond, there's this guy named Prince William who's going to be king someday, and I want to know what we're going to be. And on that note, <laughs> I'm Michelle Davis Younger. I'm the mayor of the city of Manassas. Welcome everyone to the other Prince William. So good to be with you. Today joining us is Michael Whitlock, a name that I think everybody in Manassas knows, owner of Transaction Experts and longtime city of Manassas entrepreneur. Thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. No introduction was really needed, but you know we got to do the formality. No, none, none, none fact, needed. If you don't fact, know Michael, you ain't been here. <laughs> Mr. Manassas, I totally right, agree. Right, right, right. Hey, we like to begin a lot of these off with uh, just simple get you talking. What's your favorite ice cream? Chocolate. Oh, yes. I love it. I love it. It's funny it. because you can tell a lot of pers about a person by the way they That's answer right. that question. That's right. Some right. people say, well, I like all kinds of ice creams, but uh, my favorite is chocolate. I think it's Obviously. the cone that tells yeah. you more about the person oh, if you're yeah. a cake or a sugar. Uh -oh. So uh -oh. we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. So, so let's, just, uh, let, uh, let, let's kick this off by getting a little bit about Michael Whitlock. You were brought up in Northern Virginia. You ended Our, up in Northern Virginia. How, how did you get here? All right, so let me, let me just thank our Lord Savior first for me being here. Love that. And, uh, Love that. And everybody else. Um, I grew up in Chicago. Wow. And I, I think it's important to note that. Southside boy. Well, no, actually, Northside. <laughs> Chicago Cubs, my friend. Oh, yeah. But my mother had to raise me and my sister by herself, and she was a waitress. Really? And yeah, yeah, my mom and dad got married. They were 15 and 16, and they got divorced like two years later. Oh, God. So my mom had to raise me and my sister, and uh, she put us through Catholic school. Um, well, Catholic grammar school. And then we hit the church. They made you go to church every yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And um, we didn't have a car. We lived in what would be called, they call a guard apartment. It's really a basement. So if I was standing up in there now, I'd have to yeah, bend down yeah. because the pipes. Oh, were low oh and it had to God. get warm in the wintertime to keep warm. So I didn't think of us as poor or anything because I didn't know any other thing else, you know. But we took public transportation around. My mom would, she would come home from work in the morning and we go to school so she would sleep. And then at nighttime we came home, my aunt would watch us and then she'd go to work. Mm -hmm. Tough life. Yeah. So I, I feel for single moms. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, been there. And I've been lucky because I hung around the right people you know, certain, you know, you know priests mm -hmm. and, and, and mentors. Otherwise, uh, you, you gotta have two people in the family, it really helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. Or at least have somebody that you can look up to, right? Right, um, right. You, you, you know, a, a daughter, I mean, I have a sister, so mm -hmm. we were almost, as, we're less than a year apart. Wow, you know, wow. So you know what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's important for a, a, a girl to see a father figure, to see what he's supposed to act like. And it's important for God to see a father figure to, to see what he's supposed to act like. Right, so right. I think I learned way back then that the two people in the family. Uh, I went to Catholic grammar school. Catholic's high school, uh, high schools in Chicago were terrible. My sister went to public high school. I worked, I was working since I was like nine years old, delivering papers, bus wow. a restaurant. And um, I worked full time and paid for my high school. Now back then the high school was like 500 bucks a year. St. Patrick High School in Chicago, all boys school. And it had to take the bus there. That school now is ten thousand dollars a year. Jeez. Yes, it's way different God. now. Back then it was great, and uh, but I paid for it. Um, I remember it was like five hundred bucks a year. Mm -hmm. I took the bus to work in Chicago. I worked for a company at that time. It was part of Ruff W. Woolworth, mm -hmm. and uh, we had shoe departments inside big department stores. So it was our shoes and like say like a Target. Yeah. Um, and I worked there. Um, so I did a lot of jobs before that. And then I was the first one in my family to get a license, the first one to get a car. Really? So yeah, yeah. So it was, I mean, I never looked at it as a struggle. I was just used to it. But I looked back then, I said, mm -hmm, you know, <laughs> I don't know how my mom did it, right? right. Yeah. So I remember the laundry, she would send the laundry out, I think, would come back and they put it down on the ground. It was like saran wrap, you know, with the yeah, laundry. And then yeah. that's how they had to come back. So. But we always had clean clothes. Yeah. We were in a continental ties, in a ties. So uh, went to Catholic high school, and then I was going to DePaul University. <clears throat> and then I 
I was looking at the military, but I was kind of nerdy back then, you know? And I got some letters for the Air Force Academy, and then I decided to go into the Coast Guard. But but I'll, but I'll be honest with you, I did not like it back then, and I'll tell you why. All my friends are coming back from Vietnam all messed up. Yeah. We don't know what we're doing. I said right. I didn't see anything like it. So I went to the Coast Guard for, for two years, and then I came out, went to DePaul University, got a business degree. But I was still working for that company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. FW Wars mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and opened up the first Foot Locker store in like 1980. Really? First Foot Locker store really? in 1980. That I started is so out cool. In, I started out in Kenny Shoes. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went into Foot Locker to start that division. Then I opened up Lady Foot Locker and then Kids Foot Locker after that. Yeah. yeah. Which was mm -hmm. a big corporation yeah. with a lot of different divisions. <clears throat> and I worked there probably till 1999. So from 1974 wow. Wow. basically to 1999. Oof. Uh, in the early 90s, I started getting hit retail because I was the guy that was moving up the corporate ladder. I was going to do this, yeah. this, you work, you do whatever it takes. But then when you look, see guys older than me getting laid yeah. off, no benefits, and not making the money they should. Yeah. I said, yeah. I don't know, the corporate, the corporate dream may not be there for me. Right. And so I started studying other things like uh, financial services. Uh, I got into financial services and I was still working, you know, uh, retail work. Uh, I moved up to Virginia from uh, down from uh, Philly area in 1995. Mm -hmm. So I, I moved to Woodbridge mm -hmm. and uh, I was working in a store in the Potomac Mills Mall. Oh, okay. I was traveling as a district manager too. I had all kinds of different capacities. Sure. So I was running the Marshall store in Potomac Mills um, <clears throat> and also having like a small district. And that place is a madhouse as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. so yep. You can see my yep. body's getting older and older. <clears throat> so. Um, I, so I had gotten out of retail in, in, in 2000, went into financial services industry for two years. I did good, but not quite where I wanted mm -hmm. to. I went back into retail, worked for Ross Dress for Less. Oh, okay. Very successful there for two years. And then they decided to, <clears throat> they wanted full-timers to go to part-time so they can save on medical. No, oh, wow. And take the music out of the stores. Oh. I said, uh, that's not <laughs> the right thing to do. So then I went back into the, the uh, financial services. You know, I did investments, so 663 license, I know all that stuff. Uh, but then I went back into, uh, yeah, the Madoff thing came up and the, all that. So I said, man, I don't like this industry. So I went back into retail. Uh, I was running the Marshall store in Potomac Mills, which is a madhouse because it's half of its home goods in Marshall. Yeah, yeah. In 2004, uh, they got hacked. <clears throat> and the reason why I said it is a week before the Social Security Administration got hacked, then Marshall's got hit. I'm uh, thinking, well, you know how you see stuff on the news that never happens again? Right, right. Well, Marshall's got hit for $750 million wow. worldwide, wow. including employees' cards Ooh. and customers. Wow. And so when that happens, they have to send a letter out mm -hmm. to That's all credit, the customers. Yeah. And you don't want to send that letter out, yeah. uh, but you have to. Yeah. And then there's a lot of fines and restrictions. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden we had to keep doors locked, keep this, this, it was so much stuff. But anyway, I thought that was interesting, and I kept my eye open in that industry. And I was still doing the retail bit for years, and then um, in 2014 came, I decided, you know, it's time for me to open up my own business. I'm gonna be in the credit card industry. So I left Marshalls and ventured, this is like 10 years ago. Mm. You know, it's, and I was 56 years old 10 years ago. <laughs> so it's kind of fancy, but I know Colonel Sanders could do it, I can do it. <laughs> I, love it. I love it, I love it. And so I did it. But there was one critical thing. Uh, it's like watching a swim video to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. Once you're mm -hmm. in the water, way you different. Gotta do it. So I worked for this company for six months and I had two sales. I said, well, their training's lousy. Uh, they want me to give you, a, lease you a $200 machine for 40 bucks a month for four years. I'm making a crap load of money there, but you're paying thousands of dollars that for a $200 sense. machine and they want me to put you in contracts. Right, right. I said, I don't like that. So I yeah. left. Yeah. And guess what they did? I was going to work for another company. They put a solicitation clause on me Not for a hundred miles in two years. Wow. So I had to you talk couldn't... to our buddies over at Compton and Dooling. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I had just joined a chamber. So, oh. so once I left the retail thing, I, I had never network before. Yeah. I went up with like 30 chamber events. I remember Chris Johnson would chase me down. <laughs> I'd go in there once with glasses on so she wouldn't recognize me. I'd be hiding. <laughs> I went to BNIs. I went to every oh, yeah. networking yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. you can think of. Yeah. And finally, uh, I, I, I met a great guy in the chamber, Jim DeMonica. Yep. Yep. And Jim DeMonica says, Mike, you got to do this. You got to join the chamber. Finance, man. Get out of the, yeah. get out of the ambassador committee. 
And that's what I did. Wow. Now, after I got on the ambassador committee, you know, you know, the ambassadors are supposed to, you know, mingle and all this stuff. So I'm learning the stuff on the yeah. fly. But I, when I was there, I said, you know what? After a few months on the ambassador committee, I said, I'm, I'm here to make something happen. You know, I'm here to start something. Mm -hmm. And so then I just immersed myself in everything. And then the next year, I was, I chaired the ambassador committee for the next two years and brought on uh, Janae Monroe. Who's our chair left? Mm -hmm. yeah. so we're yeah. great friends. Yeah. I brought her on. She helped me build up the ambassador committee. Then I eventually had gone on the board of directors, and then she followed me on there. And now she's going to be the chairperson mm -hmm. of the chamber mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it makes you feel good about that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and you make Jim DeMonica feel good. He tells yes. the story Jim, often. Yeah. I tease Jim about <laughs> it because he even helped me design business cards. Oh, and my wow. business cards look almost exactly like his. But I tease him now because I said, uh, he goes, Well, you know, I named my company APT Impact. So the A is first letter. So I look at his card and I said, it says apartment, A-P-T. <laughs> he gets all, he, he, gets all, he gets all wound up. So, so I mean, so oh, it is pretty wow. funny. And I still wow. see him at the Million Cubs, wow. we're good friends. He's a great guy, uh, great chamber members. And so if you just talk to people for 10 minutes from the chamber, yep. they're going to decrease the time it takes yep. for you to progress. Wow. And Jim, I actually, I actually use him three or four times a year at a paid level to beat my butt in. Mm -hmm. To make myself accountable, because mm -hmm. you know how we get lazy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I need somebody like that. So it's great to have kind of people like that. That's awesome. Now, 2014 was also important for me to get out of retail, was because on the credit cards, they were the banks had to put the chips in the card, mm -hmm. and yeah. merchants had to get the chip reader. Mm -hmm. Now we were the last country in the world to do it mm -hmm. because the banks didn't want to spend money. Mm -hmm. If you were going to Europe in 1990s or 2000s, you couldn't use your swipe, and if you didn't have a chip, you were screwed. Yeah. So uh, we we're the last country to do it because they didn't want to spend money. But I know, unlike Y2K, yeah, nothing remember happened. that, right? I knew this was happening, so I knew I, merchants had to get there. But anyway, uh, after six months with a company that I worked for, I said, one year solicitation, you know, no, two years or something, hundred miles or so. Oh my goodness, I stuck a few things in, but then I decided to become an ISO, and that's important. And ISO is an independent sales organization. There's a bunch of paperwork you have to fill out with Visa and MasterCard to be able to do it. But then I can work with anybody yeah, I want. Anybody. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an insurance guy that works at a little company. Yeah. So I'm not married to anybody yeah, yeah. and I got no boss. Right. And then I added point of sale systems because credit card processing ties in That's with that. Awesome. And then I had a website design because people pay with credit cards. Yeah. And then the last, right before COVID started, I added online ordering. But then I created a delivery company to deliver the food for restaurants. Hmm. So they don't have to pay that 15 to 30% yeah. commission. Yeah on every transaction. Mm -hmm. I charge a flat rate of like 300 bucks a month and that's it, man. Mm -hmm. I'll do a website for you for free. I'll fix your Google listing. Everything points to your business. Wow. Uh, it's awesome. Wow. And it saves them thousands of dollars. So that's my big thing. Uh, I mean, as far as that goes. But my focus has been the, the chamber as far as networking groups. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've been in other ones, but it's always been my focus mm -hmm. was to make sure that the chamber members are making the most mm -hmm. of their membership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Sorry, what a, I mean, no, yeah, that's well, a no, great that's history. It, that's what we, so, we, so, we didn't know. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I knew none of it, yeah, yeah. especially since my first job wow. was at, I was a newspaper boy like you, <laughs> but also yeah. I used to make fun of Foot Locker because when I took my first job in Fair Oaks Mall, it was at Athletic Attic. And I oh, used yeah. to say, because um, of Foot Locker, uh, uh, I used to answer the phone, Athletic Attic, a step above, oh, because of the Foot yeah, Locker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the competition began so way funny. back then, way we, back then. Uh, I used to have a last one. Well, whenever we had a new employee, mm -hmm. so there was Foot Locker, there was Kenny Shoes, there's Lady yeah, Foot Locker, yeah. there's uh, a, a couple of other yeah. Woolworths companies in the yeah, mall. Yeah. So we get a new employee and I said, man, you know, we, we need a wall stretcher. We don't have enough room here. You go to Foot Locker. <laughs> the, the guy go to Foot Locker. I knew exactly what was going. He goes, I gave the Foot Locker uh, the, foot, the uh, wall stretcher to the lady Foot Locker. They go, oh, to go there. He goes all over the mall to the last place. And, and the guy goes, no, we don't have the, the wall stretcher. And the boy he didn't want to come back. He goes, Mr. Woodlock, we can't. We can't do this. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> One time, guy never came back. That's I don't hilarious. Know, but anyway, oh my we had some good times you know, yeah. back in the retail days. Well, you, you talked about the Coast Guard. So tell us about what did you do with the Coast Guard? I was just a seaman in the just, Coast Guard. Oh, okay. But let me just expound. I just, even, uh, that's, that's pretty well, good. Let me expound more so. Yeah. I have a son of the Coast Guard that's been in there 16 years. Wow. Wow. I have a grandson in the Coast Guard for four. Wow. Wow. I have a granddaughter that graduated a year early from her high school, uh, Kettle Run in, in Fauquier, mm -hmm. 
She just turned 17. Now she applied to go into the Coast Guard Academy. Wow. wow. So, so like more than her brother. So there, there you go. go. So that's, wow, they drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. legacy, yeah. yeah. And I never really said much about that's what really I did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to, you know, do that. And they're all going in there. So so we have a Coast Guard kind of a legacy yeah. thing that we're very, very you proud do. of. You do. You should be. And it's, I mean, it's awesome, especially when my son could go to uh, May's Landing to give my <laughs> my grandson his, his, yeah. his you know, new thing. His mission yeah. papers or whatever yeah. it's and, called, yeah. And my son's been in, uh, wow. uh, you know, Botswana, Botswana like, a yeah. couple of times. Wow. Which I can think, but he loves going to I mean, abroad. That's amazing. But he's been in, That's I great. remember the first time he was in a Bayonne, which is New York City, cold out there. Mm -hmm. He would do the ice the ice breaking with like a 16 foot ball, which is small. Mm -hmm. Then he had to go to uh, Florida. And he called me up. He had a, a boating accident. He had to go to dead, mm. dead bodies were there, and he's oh, freaking out. God. Dead body uh, water is not like one of the flames. Yeah. Yeah. So he had, I had to kind of calm him down yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. Had, you know, wow. Yeah. Amazing. So you, you know, these are all life experiences. Yeah, yeah. That you just never know. The seed was planted, and uh, look at the legacy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah that's it's beautiful. I uh, well. I want to just stop really quickly and recognize Miguel uh, Perez, who yes, has Miguel. invited us yes. uh, up to his beautiful restaurant at Zandra's to have yes. uh, a uh, this conversation with Michael Whitlock. And um, so sometimes you might hear trucks going on in the background because we're outside on this <laughs> beautiful on deck on the yes, rooftop. Yes, so it's a beautiful I remember day. when Bob asked me a year ago, hey, we're going to do some podcasts. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, but what about the rooftop of Zanthus? There we yeah, are. Yeah, and here we are. are. It's, yes. it's Mr. Manassas. Right in the middle of the city. All the time. That's I mean, right. I love you the city. are. I love you the are. vendors. Yeah. I love everybody. So. You love the mayor. Yeah. I love the mayor, too. What what uh, is the one thing? Although I feel you, like in you your story, already said it. he already did. But it. what is the one thing nobody would guess about you from your perspective? Uh, I love I love playing pickleball. Yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. know that. I, 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 I know that. I, I, I thought you were going to say. Well, I'm really scared of, of walking into a room. Spiders. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know you're not. You couldn't possibly be. No, <laughs> like, what's one thing spiders, no, one like no one would ever guess? No one would ever guess. They would not guess. That's a good one there. Yeah. Uh, I, I was really nerdy when, when I was young, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, no, I would, no, that's I not it. We would yeah, guess that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I said it too. I, mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever guess how you describe growing up. No, me either. I, that, that's, I, that's a I big thing. I mean, you thing don't give that no, off at all. That. And and the buses back then, we had to take. Yeah. The bus, if the buses had those wire things that had to connect to the wires. Yeah, so yeah. you could take oh, the bus yeah. that comes off, the guy had to get out and do this. Yeah, fix the, yeah. Yeah. the 40 Nobody gas buses. would look at you yeah. now and think that. that. Gas but buses. you know, that's what we say, don't judge people by the current chapter. You just Because you know. never know what they've been through. And so, to hear was, you say yeah. all that stuff is like, I will wow. say that people don't realize. Um, they don't. Like I said, I had never networked, so I had to learn. Yeah. See, and that, so you don't look like that, right? I had to do a lot of reading and stuff like that. I mean, I've always followed the it's great. I did multi-level marketing in the 90s because I was trying to transition out of retail, mm -hmm. but I learned a lot mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. from leaders like Tony Robbins and mm -hmm. all these guys. Mm -hmm. And you know, about money, but but about running a business. Mm -hmm. And so the passion inside, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, passion is very important. Yeah. Education is yeah. important, but yeah. passion is important too. And I think mm -hmm. you have to have that. My, my dad um, was a mechanic, and then he opened up a bunch of transmission shops. Mm -hmm. Sold a couple. Bought a couple, tried to get in the old boys network with casinos oh, in California. Yeah. Um, real blue collar guy. Um, and then my uncle, his brother, is like a ritzy guy. Yeah. You know, he he uh, uh, he opened up businesses, closed businesses. Um, and so he's a little, and he is an entrepreneur. He still does, he's a foremost expert on scams in the United States. Okay. He advises the FBI. Um, CIA, wow. AARP. Wow. He was a guy in, in the 90s. You remember when Oprah had her show and yeah. all the people? He was yeah. the investigator guy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. His name Chuck Whitlock. Yeah. yeah. Chuck would go in front of the bank. Remember when banks had the, yeah. the, the depository? Yeah. And he would stand there in a uniform <laughs> and you would be making the deposit. He goes, ma'am, the depository's done and I'm taking the deposits. And you can buy side the computer receipt is off. It's like and the people want it. Like, yeah. Well, one of my favorite ones is where you go into the bank and you fill out a deposit ticket, yeah. and then you take it, give it to the teller, and give yeah. me money. But you had his deposit number and print it on the <laughs> Oh my god. So so he never did like sex mean? crimes. He only did scams. And he wrote 13 books. The last book he wrote, his wife said, 
No, he, he told the wife, anywhere you want to live in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, she wanted to live in North Carolina by the beach. But he, he's got all these 13 books about scams. The last book he wrote about the 9-11 police and dogs. Mm -hmm. Because the dogs are poor too. Yeah. Because people yeah. were writing about the fire people. Yeah. And when he was a young guy, he had to put a lady on the street. That Legally, he had to put her on the street when she got scammed by somebody. Mm -hmm. He said, if I can ever get back, he oh actually helped that lady go in a home and then oh. was with her until she passed away. Wow. But once he got, you know, to be an entrepreneur, um, he always wanted to write the books about the scams and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And so he is a little, he's got kind of an ego with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, and, uh, but he's, the guy's great. So you, you are an entrepreneur family, but I never really was with those guys because I wasn't, you know, my dad, mom and dad got divorced. Right. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. I still kept in touch with my dad, but yeah. not until probably in the 90s. Yeah. So yeah. it's a little bit different. Great guy, great It's people. funny because you have no ego. I, I don't yeah. feel like you have an ego. You don't. You're very uh, humble. You well, let me tell you, okay, so one thing that you don't know about me, <laughs> I am super, super selfish. Now, let me relate that to you, okay? I'm selfish about helping people out and seeing the results. I asked uh, the Omni Ride gentleman, Bob, Bob, Bob Snyder, yeah. Yeah. Rob Snyder, I watched the podcast. Yeah. And he mentioned about uh, John Hart. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I said Michael Whitlock connected us. And I yeah. vividly remember it, but I don't like think right, about right, it. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, and he said, you know, that, that, and I think well, that makes me feel good. So I'm selfish because yes. I want to hear that to know mm -hmm. that it was successful. Yeah. I'm still yeah. good stuff with John. Yeah. All the yeah. time. I, I keep beating up John. I say, hey, man, we got you doing? IKEA to work with. Yeah. Yes. They want to yeah. be a drop off yeah. point yeah. for you. Just like the yoga place yeah. up is up in uh, Gainesville, mm -hmm. he has a couple drop-off points. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. Big, yeah. keep Prince William Beautiful's a uh, uh, partner. Yes. Is that yes. Yeah. So yeah. he's got some ideas. So work with guys like that. Yeah. And just anybody. And when I want to hear the successes. Mm -hmm. so, oh man, mm -hmm. that's what I'm selfish mm -hmm. about. That, yeah. That's the only thing I ever want to hear. Is that? And it makes me feel good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, so. you should, you've done that a lot so. for people around I can't here. Even think so. about what I just, yeah. It's just a natural thing to do for people. So if you can't <laughs> tell us one thing that nobody would guess about you, how about out. Uh, what has been so since 2014? <coughs> uh, was that when you started Transaction Experts, or was that probably 15? 15, 15. 15. Yeah. Uh, and um, and you made up that name. Yes. Transaction. That's a name. It's, it's great. It's, it's yeah. yours. It fits. And what has been your biggest surprise over the last decade? In the fact that you now own this business and you had to figure all that stuff out, but what kind of surprised you? What? Um, well, again, I worked for corporations, so I didn't know what the little guys were going through day in, day out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got people that go home at nighttime and they got to face their wife. They're not going to tell her they could they could make payroll. Right. So what what the entrepreneurs are going through. Yeah. And that's really what, yeah. what I felt that I didn't know about. Right. As I got to know people, mm -hmm. you got to build the relationships up. Yeah. And I think that was important for me to get that empathy for it. Yeah. And, uh, and and utilize any technology or any software that I can help them with their business. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I tell businesses that, you know, I try to get businesses more to run more efficiently mm -hmm. and more effectively. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. through the credit card processing right. and anything else I can do to save them money. And if I, and look at this, maybe you can't use me now, but guess uh, what? You're gonna use me, you know what? I'm gonna connect you with people right now. Right, exactly. So I, I, I tell our members, look at this, if you're talking with a customer and all this stuff, and the last thing that you wanna say is you're part of Princeton Chamber of Commerce, and I have you know 1,500 people in there, and they'll mm -hmm. you know what? Let's sit down for five minutes. Yep. They'll at least talk to you about that. Five minutes, yeah. So I think it's important. Mm -hmm. If the chamber was perfect, we wouldn't need any of these networkers. But right. the fact is, it can't be. It's right. possible. But right. if you think of it like that, mm -hmm. okay, how can we get the chamber to be better and better? Right. Make the most of our membership. My thing, it, as I started the ambassador thing, was members first, members strong. Right? You know, it's a slogan that we use somewhere else. But I thought it was important. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. just having the people around you, whether it's in you know, you know, health, yeah. whatever, and sickness like we yeah. had last week, with yeah. Greg yeah. and everything. Yeah, that's... but the camaraderie of people around you. I know it means uh, so much. It means so it much. Means so, so it's a different much. thing. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely, absolutely, you know, different. Okay. And so I think that kind of a thing. And then of course we were mentoring people too a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so people need it. They can't they put do. a thing up on your window and say yeah. you're a chamber member without doing some work. That's right. I said it's net, net work. It's not net eat, net food, net morning. Yeah. Work. Net work. That's good. Eat. I like that. I'm stealing that. I, I like, like that it. too. Like that. Because like that. it's a part of your it's day. Right. Every single day. I walk into a business and the guy's, you know, the guy's been open for six months and I get to meet the owner. I go, hey, you know, your website's not, you know, it's really not great. He goes, well, you know, I'm still working on it. Okay. I go, how long have you been working on it? Well, you know, you know, six, six months. Open, six yeah. months. I said, what are you worth an hour? 
I worked seven hundred hours an hour. I said seven hundred hours. How many hours you've been working on this thing? I don't know, hundred. I said you, you could have paid three thousand hours and got a perfect website done. You have to think about working on your business, not in your business. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I didn't look at it like that. Yeah, well, this I have to look great. at it. And we have people that can work awesome. with you and give you direction. Awesome. So yeah, work on your business and not in it. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done sometimes. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. You're trying to do it yourself. So, crystal ball. Yes. Where is Michael Whitlock in ten years? Ten years. Still in Manassas. <laughs> well, I'm starting to veer myself into the pickleball arena and build ah. and investing in, in pickleball around the country. Okay. Uh, franchising. Awesome. Out. And the way that happened was I met people that were working for Dead Lake. Mm. And you know, me and my wife's gonna open up a pickleball thing in Maryland, and the guy did a year later, but then he he stuck with it mm -hmm. and now the franchising and he left did like Erica Spaulding, yep. who's now a big sales yes. marketing person yes. traveling around the country. Yes. Never thought that she'd be yes. doing that. Amazing. So you never know where things are gonna come from. I always and and I encourage young people to get involved in chamber. Why? Mm -hmm. Two reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, you're not really sure what you're gonna do. Right. And then at least when you're networking, you can see all the different businesses. That's right. All That's things. right. I wish I had done that oh, when I was younger, but I was working. Right. I was the corporate trying to dream, make it. moving yeah. up, blah, 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 yeah. blah. You know, and uh so I encourage yeah. young people to get in there. When you graduate from high school, get, get yourself a library mm -hmm. card. Yeah. yeah. Anything you ever want to be vote. or do, <laughs> you can find it in the library. Yeah. You yeah. Know, because you just can't know yeah. everything. That's what right. are you going to do? That's right. So that's, that's right. what I, so I would be mentoring more people probably. Good. Good. One thing I was joking people about when they say, hey, boss, I said, don't call me boss. That's double S O B spelled backwards. <laughs> I know, sorry. I know, sorry. I know, oh I know what you're thinking. I know, I know what you're thinking, right? Don't come in. And then I would say, and then I would say, that. then I would say, oh, that, would, that would say, call me coach. But you know what? Um, <laughs> yeah. And now even coach, you know, coaches tend to point things out that are bad. And they try to, you know, you know, push people to do stuff that they don't want to do. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I've always thought, and still today, then I'm a catalyst. You so are. a catalyst sparks something you are. inside somebody that's already good, but makes it better. Yeah. Yeah. And not, and not just, you know, gripe about those things. So I think, I think if we can be catalyst uh, mm -hmm. to everybody, and I, I think the chamber mm -hmm. could be mm -hmm. a catalyst and mm -hmm. are a catalyst, right? And so I think that's important to be a catalyst, not mm -hmm. just a coach and pointing out things like this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you know, spark it. <coughs> you know, uh, mm -hmm. build up whatever strength mm -hmm. they have. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes all the difference yeah. in the world. So. You're an enabler. Well, and that's, I, that's what I, you are. You uh, enable. Certain, certain and, people, not everybody. And <laughs> I think that, I mean, a beautiful title for you is mentor. I mean, yeah. I really think yeah. that you're really. a, a role model and a mentor in, in business and, and certainly in how to activate yourself inside the chamber. Yeah. How oh, to, yeah. How oh, to make yourself a yeah. great chamber God. person. Yeah, so always trying to find is Connection. different things yep. and, and some things the members can get involved with. Right. You know, the right. council's committees are underway. Yeah, right. Right. yeah, right. yeah. You know, right. Uh, right. I, I think when uh, the Omni Ride guy, Bob, mm -hmm. had had connected with John, mm -hmm. yeah. it was a veterans council meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We had 50 people there. Wow. I've never seen a council yeah. committee with 50 people. It's pretty amazing. And so when you get people like that there, things happen. Passion. Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. My favorite yeah. thing is that those council committees, when you, when you tell them that you're a Coastie, they all are like, you know, when, yeah. when somebody goes around the room and says, Marine Corps, <laughs> hoorah! Oh, they make all the like, yeah, Coast Guard. <laughs> you get the Army guys go, hoorah, 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 hoorah. I said, you guys, you guys still got Tourette's? Yeah. 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 And, and then when they come to me, I, I say, love it. I, I love say, it. Hey, we're the Elite Fighting Force with the Smurfs and the Ninja yeah. Turtles hey, and Space hey, Force. Hey, yeah, I said, it's Coast Guard. Right uh, 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 Hold your own. That's great. That's awesome. Well, we could not wrap up season one of the podcast without yeah. asking you, uh -huh. Mr. Chamber, what is the most interesting <laughs> Chamber story that you can share with us legally? Well, I know Caitlin's going to edit stuff, so. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what no, no, no. Uh, legally, wow. No, no, no. no legally, oh, that's I, it. I added that in. Okay, let me, let me throw some in. So, yeah. things happen that inspire you to go. Mm -hmm. More. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I met a gentleman named Anthony Fiore. Mm -hmm. Anthony Fiore started a company called Comfort Keepers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> His wife told him to join the chamber. Mm -hmm. He joined the chamber. Then he met guys like Jenna Monica, myself, and all this. Great guy, super guy. Even had a, uh, his office was in the bottom of the chamber building that we were at. Mm -hmm. And he would do training of his uh, uh, people. It was a home health care. It would train the people in the conference room. 
of the chamber. Mm -hmm. And he was diligent in it. <clears throat> we had an RFP come out <clears throat> uh, that goes in a chamber, and it was for taking over the 96 beds in Prince Room County. <clears throat> and so he got the RFP along with a lot of other people. <clears throat> and he's only been in business for a year. But he was good at writing, because he did some writing for the government. But the other, the advantage he had was there was nobody that was going for the RFP that was tied into the military mm. at all. Uh. And, and that's important because they used to get preferential treatment mm -hmm. first. Right. Nobody. Right. Right. So he gets it. Wow. 96 beds could tipple his business. Wow. And I, I still see Anthony. He's unfortunately he's a Philadelphia fan. I don't know why. Oh, God. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's misguided. misguided you. I understand. But what a great guy. Yeah. And he's, and and he's still around. You know, he's all over the place now, but that's a great story to use that for is. a chamber member that something big can happen out of it. It's just after a year. He just yeah. he just couldn't believe it. But he said, hey, my wife made me join the chamber. And that was and 14 years ago? Oh it my was, God. It's, it's, it's probably I, maybe eight, eight. Eight or 10 years ago. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's it was awesome. after I got on board, so it was about seven or eight years ago. But his story is just, and Comfort Keepers, Yeah. I think Val and Doing Neal, great, yeah, doing them. awesome. And they just doing great, great, great doing company. Doing great stuff. And he still does other stuff. Yeah. But you get leaders like that. Yeah. And then even sit yeah. with the guy for 10 minutes, because I was kind of newish, mm -hmm. and I was learning stuff from him. Mm -hmm. But I was excited what the chamber was doing and, and how we tied in everything. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So the opportunity's great. there. It's yeah. not just one thing. There's other things that you could be involved with. Getting in the SWAM program, mm -hmm. getting yeah. into V3, which yeah. we will mm -hmm. show people how to do it. Mm -hmm. Getting in a government, my least favorite thing is government contract. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean I don't push people right. to the government contract. Right. Said, Dude, that's their thing. Crimes. That's right. Came in. That's right. Let's go. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. But even that, mm -hmm. I still push people into it because I know how important it is. It gives us an edge, other over the other chambers. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know what I'm saying? That's so, good. So that's I good. think it's important. And anybody I can help with the lead yeah. with the lead shares and all this yeah. stuff, I go in and visit yeah. and say hi yeah. and stuff. You do. You Next time I can help well. and give ideas out, people yeah. appreciate it and good things come back to you. So before we wrap, the yes. one piece of it one piece of advice yes. for we work with a lot of businesses, yes. we know that and you've shared a lot here today. Uh, one <clears> piece <throat> of advice mm -hmm. that you would give for a business owner. Very simple. Yep. It's a quote. You always have to appreciate everything. So mm. you never know That's right. the value of a moment. Be in the moment. Until it becomes a memory. Oh, mm. you're killing that's me. That's employee wise, that's personally wise, it's oh, faith, yeah. everything. That's so awesome. you never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Gosh. So that's, that's cool. great. Oh my God. I used to have it in my headers, then I took it off. Wow. Uh, that's, that's, that's beautiful really good. and deep. That's really good. I have my deep, but it's just yeah. simple, right? Wow. It, it doesn't have to be complicated. Oh. And what I gotta your, steal that. I'm happen. stealing. Okay. <laughs> I, wow. I don't have the TM out of here. So. I think we have somebody in the wow. chamber that does patents. I can get wow. it done. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, and, just, okay. Is that, are you good? That, that's you your, got, that's your one wrap. That is a wrap. Can I was you very believe excited it? about it was, being here and, see, and we're so glad <clears> you did it. And I watched the first three podcasts and yeah. we got to figure out a way to get them. The lead shares and share them. Yes, share them. yes, it's because really good. It's important. Good thing that we're and, uh, doing. Podcast a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, really yeah. is, and, and, and we're having fun doing them. Oh yeah, we love showcasing all the wonderful people in this area. It's, all it's amazing. Sure. So, well, right. I just honored you guys had me come on board. Oh so. gosh, oh stop it! Honor. Yeah, it's yeah, our honor, honor. Exactly. exactly. So that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us today. We would encourage you to stay connected by following the other Prince William podcast on your favorite podcast platform listed in the description. Until next time, be sure to keep supporting local businesses, artists, and entrepreneurs. Thank you, Michael, for joining us today. And thank you, listeners, for being a part of this journey. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Other, the Other Prince, Prince William. William. <laughs>